good afternoon YouTube and welcome back to the channel. So you probably noticed from the title and the thumbnail that I have a clutch problem with the Royal Enfield Himalayan here. I'm going to take the bike for a short ride just to show you what a slipping clutch looks like. And then I'm going to talk you through how I know that the bike needs a new clutch rather than this just being a, like a cable adjustment issue for example. Now I'm sure that most of you know exactly what a slipping clutch looks like uh, especially if you've ridden bikes for any length of time but for the sake of this I'm just going to take the bike around the town here uh, and then I'm going to quickly take it up the bypass just to show you exactly what's happening. I started to feel that the gear shift on sort of fourth and fifth gear here on the Himalayan was starting to feel a little bit woolly. Uh, so I switched out of my heavy motorcycle boots, my CD Adventures, into these, um, let me see if we can see them, into these TDR1 teams. Now these are still motorcycle boots, they're much lighter, so it helps me to feel this sort of response if you like through the shift lever because ordinarily with this bike it's quite a, it's a, it's a satisfying snick that you get you know it's not a clunk when you change gears but it's feeling a little bit softer than it should be the speed's nice and low uh, it's matching the revs we're not really you know pulling on that throttle to any extent so you're not really noticing any you know major slip in the clutch it's once we start to get up out uh, town start to pick up speed that we'll start to see a difference and I'll show you that now once we get on this country road. I'm sitting in third gear here and if I open up this throttle you can see how those revs are going way up but nothing's happening to the speed of the bike you know that's classic clutch slippage. It's worth pointing out guys that the clutch is adjusted properly today I've had this adjusted very very tight just to check it and the clutch is slipping and then I've had it adjusted far too loose basically but that takes the tension off the clutch plates and the springs themselves and the clutch is still slipping at speed so that tells me it's not an adjustment issue my gut instinct tells me that it might well be the OEM springs that come with the clutch I don't think they're particularly strong uh, but of course the diagnostics on these things are difficult and it starts to become a little bit of a false economy for example if I were to take the clutch cover off here to have a look at the clutch plates and the springs then okay I could just replace the springs and potentially get another say five six seven thousand miles out of it for, for whatever but of course if you want to do the job properly then you're going to be replacing the gasket that's at least you know 10 quid you're going to replace the oil filter and the oil there's another 20 30 quid so it starts to become a false economy so when your clutch starts to slip like this the first thing you want to do is make sure that it's adjusted correctly with a new bike brand new clutch new clutch cable then this adjustment sits down here somewhere but obviously over time as these plates and, and the springs and stuff start to wear then that adjustment starts to creep up and of course once you get to this point then you're essentially out of any kind of useful adjustment any kind of sustained riding speed distance very quickly going to overheat what's left of this clutch <laughs> that in turn overheats the oil overheats the engine causes more damage than you necessarily want goes without saying that it's not exactly safe to ride like this especially if you're on a, a main road say a bypass for example you're sitting at 50 55 miles per hour four and a half thousand revs you know you open up that throttle and you get nothing but noise and maybe a burning smell which is obviously not exactly helpful if you're sitting at 50 55 miles an hour nursing the bike along then people sitting behind you are going to start to get frustrated so you don't want to ride like this you see here the mileage is sitting just over twelve and a half thousand miles about thirteen thousand miles which is about you know twenty thousand kilometers Let's walk round here. So of course, ordinarily a clutch should last longer than, you know, 12, 12 and a half thousand, 13,000 miles. Riding off-road can have a bearing on that as well, because if you're in difficult terrain, there's a lot of sort of feathering clutches and wheel spinning and that type of thing. To be honest, guys, this clutch was pretty much doomed from the moment I bought the bike. And that's because when I rode it out of the dealership, it was actually adjusted far too tight. I partly blame myself for it, for not noticing it earlier, but... You know what it's like with a new bike, you know, you're breaking it and you're just getting used to the feel of the levers and that type of thing. But cutting a long story short, the actual clutch itself from manufacture was adjusted far too tight. It very quickly overheated, overheated the clutch, overheated the engine and 
it essentially made the bike unrideable. Not realising what the problem was, I got Royal Enfield to pick the bike up and it got taken back to the dealership. It turns out when the bike went back to the dealership, none of the parts were actually replaced. Didn't get a new clutch, didn't get new clutch springs or anything. All he did was readjust that clutch cable. And of course the bike's been running fine, but now, you know, 13,000 miles down the line, the chickens have come home to roost. I suppose the question becomes, you know, is this a warranty issue? Uh, some, some manufacturers, some dealers will argue that, you know, a clutch is a, a wear and tear item, especially if you're riding off-road. I think, knowing the history of this bike, it would be hard to argue that this wasn't a Royal Enfield issue. So, having said all that, you're probably going to think that I'm a bit mad when I tell you that I'm not actually going to take this back to the dealership to get it uh, repaired. I've actually ordered a clutch gasket, new springs, upgraded springs from Hitchcock's and I'm going to do the job myself. I like to do my own maintenance on the bike. All of these jobs I like to do on my own because I'm continually learning about the machines that I ride. I'm not suggesting for one minute that if you have this issue you should go out and buy a clutch and just do this job on your, on your own because of course it is a little bit more complex. And I also have the fallback position. Remember my brother's a mechanic so if I really have any great difficulty with this then you know he's only a phone call away to come and help me out with it. So I'll make a video on that changing the clutch etc. Now I'm not going to be riding the bike very often over the next few days but as soon as the parts arrive then it's going to be priority number one to get that new clutch switched in there and get back on the road again. I know this video was a little bit different but I figured it would be worthwhile just letting you guys know exactly what's happening with the bike and why I think it's happened and exactly what we're going to do about it. Anyway that's it for this one guys. Ride safe and I'll see you in the next one.